Hi everybody, Father Bill Holtzinger from St. Anne Catholic Church, and here it is, the Easter candle. We have received it, the Paschal candle, and this is our annual unboxing, and I love to do these. But you know what I noticed as I got here, take a look, it's been already opened by somebody. So, don't need my tools, don't need that, don't need that. I probably don't need those. I was gonna measure how tall it is, but we know it's marked on it, so I don't need that either. So all I need is my trusty scissors. So let's open it up. If we do so, uh, this comes from Cathedral Candles, or Cathedral Candle Company. Uh, you'll see also here it mentions that it is 51% beeswax, which is part of the ritual that the candle is supposed to be made of bees. Uh, not in this case 100%, but it's the idea that it comes to us from creation. So human beings have used in cooperation with bees the ability to make this beautiful symbol. So here we go. <clears throat> I guess in one sense it's easier in the previous years I had to take those tools and pry open the big staples, but yeah, be gentle with that. Oh. There's trips on themselves like a the camera person. Right, Sandra? Right. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Let's take a look at this. It's got an opening here, so this is doubly covered here. But then there's like a foam with plastic so that it fits for the candle. So you can see now. Here's the candle. And this is a candle that we've had in the previous years as well. Um, it's called Luke 24. And it's Luke 24. And it, Luke 24 reads, and specific, it's actually, a, uh, there's a lot to that, chap that chapter, but specifically, the people that made this candle, um, they, from Eximus, this is their Eximus series, uh, this particular text. Why do you search for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has been raised up. So... Here we are. So in the box is also, not just wrapping here, but we have a box here. And I'm gonna have to untie this. These are the little, right. let me get a little closer. These are the um, nails. And these get put on, they're just basically pins and uh, wax makes them a little more substantial. And when we push them, we gotta be very careful because wax is, is by nature very soft. But these are put in in the part of the ritual at the uh, Easter Vigil called the Lucinarium where we bless the Easter candle and light it. So I'll put that down. Let's take a look at this candle then. It's rather large. Let's see here. In fact, it's so large. Let's see if we can get a measurement on how tall this thing is. That's why I brought my handy dandy measuring tape. And it is... Uh, Four feet, 48 inches. It's taller than some of our kids, right? And maybe some of our adults that are a little bit shorter. Yeah, it's pretty serious. There is no way we're gonna burn through this whole uh, candle. And we were actually we were looking to get maybe something a little smaller this, last, this year, but I'm not crying over spilt milk because it's pretty substantial. This size actually fits the size of our church. So let's pull this out, lay it down. Maybe get these things out of the way. Cut it open here, shall we? Uh, we've always had great success with um, the Cathedral Candle Company. Uh, we get ours through Michael's Church Supply out of Wilsonville. He does our ordering for us. He does a great job. Mm, there's more here. I believe this is the first... This is the candle that we first put in the brand new church. The colors match the walls and the environment, so it worked out really well. And it was the candle that they had advertised for that year. So, mm -hmm. There's all different kinds of themes they have for these. An interesting thing, and these are because um, they are wax, when we put them in the stand, sometimes if the stand isn't straight, the candle start actually starts to bend. So take a look at here it is. It's very gentle here. Amazing. Take a look at this. So from the bottom top, let's start with the bottom here. Here it is. Why do you search for the living among the dead? He is not here. 
he has been raised up. Really awesome. So it's kind of gold leafing or gold color there. And typically on a Easter candle or a Paschal candle, you have the signs of Alpha and Omega from the book of Revelation, where we hear that Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. These are the first letter and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. And of course, the date of the year that we are in, 2022. And of course, it has the cross. Now the cross will get pierced by these candles, these, uh, excuse me, these um, nails, so to speak. And they'll be put in these different locations on the cross. So there'll be one in the center and one on each of the corners to symbolize the five wounds of Christ. I like this one. And the previous we'd had ones where the, the uh, nails did not, they were really small. And unfortunately they didn't really, they were hard to put in and they weren't substantial to be able to see. And that was the case, I think, in our last one. But anyhow, this one also has, moving up above, the Cairo. Cairo is the first two letters in the Greek word for Christ. There's the P, that would be like what we call an R, and then of course there's the X, so Cairo, and there's the R. It's not really an R, it's a P. But that's, that's the thing, this is the candle, and you get a sense of size, it is like that. We put on the top of it a metal piece called a follower so that when we light it, it doesn't drip all over here. And the trick is then when this uh, is moved, we have to be very careful of not uh, messing with the wonderful the wax uh, artistry that is here. This is all wax. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention this. This is supposed to be the shroud that is of uh, Christ and then it's wrapped around the cross. So let me read to you what was said just from the company about this candle. Again, that text, why do you search for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has been raised up. The significant and meaningful words of Luke 24, which is the name of this candle, but verse five, are, bold, are boldly inscribed into the lower bands of the distinguished Paschal candle from the Cathedral can Candle Company. Christ's shroud is draped on his cross, rendering, a metic rendering a in rendered in meticulous detail. The other traditional symbols of the Paschal candle, the Cairo and the Alpha Omega, are included as well. The candle contains 51% beeswax with its elements highlighted in copper leaf and burnished with bronze wash. So uh, we then we take this now and we will uh, touch these the little items here, the numbers, when we speak about the year in the Lucent Arms uh, rite of the Easter Vigil. And then we take a small, some small kind of wick and we get that from the Easter fire, which has been blessed, and we light this candle. And then we put the follower on it because again, we don't want it to be dripped all over. So that's the Easter candle, folks. And this will be seen and actually enthroned into the sanctuary uh, after the procession of the lighting of the Easter fire, uh, the blessing of the candle, and then it'll be placed in the sanctuary in the Easter vigil. So when you come to the Easter vigil, that's what's going on. The lights are completely out inside the church. This is the only candle lit. But from this candle, we light our small taper candles and spreads it out throughout the rest of the community which is pretty cool. If you haven't been to the Easter Vigil, ours is at 8.30. I encourage you to come here at St. Anne. It's beautiful. It's like one of the, it's the most beautiful of all of our liturgies. It's a little longer than your normal. It's not an hour. It's a couple of hours, maybe even sometimes three, uh, but it's amazing because what we do with this, we listen to a bunch of scripture readings, which are really kind of giving us a, the, the short of salvation history. And when I say short, it's short in the sense that we're not reading the whole Bible. We're picking out seven of the most important in the Old Testament readings, a New Testament reading, and a gospel. Well, then we will do this after this, after the gospel is proclaimed, we will uh, then take this Easter candle and process it to the baptismal font. Uh, and we'll bless the font with it. In fact, this gets then plunged into the font, because remember this has been blessed, uh, as a sign of blessing for the baptismal font. This is part of the ritual, it's an optional one. Uh, and it's supposed to have a sense of life. That's, we're transferring life uh, or blessing from this candle and we're blessing the water uh, and then that means from there this gets put aside as we do the baptisms but from this candle we then light again the candles for those who've been baptized and um, we don't have those candles here i don't think the small ones but um, the ones that are being those who be baptized will have special candles and eventually they'll light again everybody's candles as well so that's the deal that's our paschal candle for this year 2022 at 23 i'm father bill at saint anne catholic church May God bless you, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.